You are listening to Charting Wealth's comprehensive review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 6th of August, 2018. Everything up for the day. So we finish the day on, uh, we finish the week rather, and the day on an up note. Now our book, Charting Your Way to Wealth, in its fifth printing, we just started sending out purchases of the fifth printing. If you don't have the book, you need it. It is what you need to understand what it is we do here. Multiple chapters on everything from the price percent oscillator to the kind of trend lines that we use to time frames to the kind of emotions you have to have and be able to control to actually be in the market and be successful. You name it, it's in our book with our two main methods of getting into and out of trades. So if you want to have it, there is a link that you can find on any of the places where we publish this video or audio that you are looking at or listening to. You can find it under the show notes in iTunes under our podcast. You can find it at the YouTube channel. And of course, if you're at chartingwealth.com and particularly if you're a subscriber, you can find on the daily market reviews in this comprehensive review and forecast links to all the things that we have to offer to you including our book and then all of the free things, the daily market worksheets, weekly market worksheets, the trade worksheet, all the videos, everything we have to offer you. So we appreciate your support and, of course, special trainings coming out on the 7th and the 15th for people who've purchased the book. Now, let's jump into these markets and see what's going on. It, we see the S&P 500 up for the day, 0.43% on Friday. It was an up week for the market. Let's go ahead and pull up the correct chart. We see on the weekly chart, we've gone into our fourth week of up movement. Things have slacked off a little bit, not going up at the high pace that it had originally started off on that big move up for that week ending the 13th of July. But our fourth week of open box green candles. Price percent oscillator ticked up at a higher rate. Derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. We go from the weekly to the two day. We see that the derivative oscillator is losing upward momentum, but that price percent oscillator ticked back over going up on the first day of this latest two day candle, which will wrap up on Monday. So that is looking quite nice. And what about that four hour chart? Well, of course, at the end of the day, it ticked over, over and started going up. So what does that mean? That means that you want to pay close attention to the market on Monday morning. You can check it around 1030 to see if things are moving up or at noon when that first four hour candle closes and you can jump in. This is nice to see both the derivative oscillator and price percent oscillator crossing at the same time. So again, you may very well have a jumping in point there on Monday in further up moves on the S&P 500. Let's go back to the weekly, go to the Qs. That's, of course, the NASDAQ 100 up 0.31% for the day. Considerably weaker, you know, there's been a lot going on in the tech stocks, and we see things really hit their high back on the week ending the 20th of July, and then have been sliding sideways and tending down since then. We finished the week with pretty much a doji. It looks like a cross. It means that lots of indecision there blew through the weekly trend line, and of course that two-day trend line has crossed over already going down. Derivative oscillator continuing to lose momentum. Now the only good news is that price percent oscillator is still almost flat, but heading up a little bit. That's on the weekly. What do we see on the two-day chart? Well, that two-day chart, we see that the derivative oscillator is flipped over negative along with the price percent oscillator, but it's pretty much flat. We do see that price movement up on the first day of this latest two-day candle is pushed through the downtrend on the two-day and is sitting right there up on where the weekly trend line is. We go from the two-day to the four-hour chart. And of course, we had a crossover going up on that four-hour chart in the morning on Friday. Things continuing to move up, pushing through the two-day sitting right there below the weekly. So that's a good sign, but there's no trade on the queues right now because that pesky two-day chart still in a confirmed down move. That's going to have to change first before we can get serious about a trade on the queues. We go from Q1 
QQQ to bonds. What do we see on TLT, the 20-year bonds? Bonds, of course, in their third down week, strong down week, following that prior down week ending Friday the 27th of July. Well, this Friday, another strong down week. Not enough downward pressure, though, to cross over going down, so we don't have a weekly vertical crossover yet. We'll continue to watch things. We look at the two-day chart. What do we see? Of course, it's continuing uh, to moved down. There was a spinning top for the first day of this latest two-day candle. We'll see how that finishes out on Monday. That, of course, means downward, uh, a, a lot of indecision, uh, but at the same time uh, ended on sort of a green doji, means indecision tending up. We see the derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator still heading down pretty strongly. We go from that two-day to the four-hour. What do we see? Well, it crossed over in the morning heading up. So we'll continue to watch and see what we see since we have this divergence between the weekly up and the two-day down. We won't have any ability to trade TLT until that gets sorted. So we'll go from the weekly um, on TLT to gold. And gold, of course, just continues to hammer down. Another week of down moves. Gold really started moving down strongly. I guess that week ending the 20th of April, 20th, 27th is when the real power started moving down with strong red down candles. Only three weeks since then of up movement. These last three weeks, strong down movement. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator headed down. Where will things stop? Well, we can see that there was a floor back around 1555 if we go back to July of last year and we go back to March of 2017. So we'll see if gold's going to blow all the way through there and really hammer down to where it got at the end of the year in 2016 around 108, sort of the next stopping point if it blows through 115. So again, we'll just watch today and the weekly are in confirmed down moves, derivative oscillator heating up in its downward momentum, price percent oscillator heading down. And we can see on the two-day chart what we see happening is a sideways slide that went on for several days, then strong down move on that two-day candle ending the second, which was on Thursday. And of course on Friday, bit of an up move, up 0.35% on gold. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Looks like the price percent oscillator is trying to head up. So we'll continue to keep our eye on things. Of course, what have we been waiting on? We've been waiting on that four-hour chart to really hammer down. It did cross over going down in the morning on Thursday. Really hammered down fr uh, Thursday afternoon. Up some in the morning on Friday. And then uh, pretty much a doji tending down in the afternoon on Friday. So we'll continue to keep our powder dry <clears throat> and watch what's going on. We haven't had a crossover going up on the four-hour chart. It's still negative. Derivative oscillators losing some, some momentum. So if you're in that trade, let's watch very closely what goes on with the market on Monday morning for continued inverse moves down in gold. And of course, that weekly still, still strong down. All things being equal, the market always tends to move in the direction of the largest chart. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day. On Friday, go into the new week. Buy our book. We love to hear from you. Always feel free to write us, chartingwealth1 at gmail.com. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.